In this demonstration, we're going to have a look at identity provider integration with vSphere with Tanzu. Now, I already have a supervisor cluster created. I also have a namespace created, and I have a Kubernetes cluster, Tanzu Kubernetes cluster deployed in that namespace. The only permissions I've associated with the namespace at present is the administrator user. I don't have any other identity sources configured at this point in time. If we take a closer look at the supervisor, uh, we will see that there's a new configuration section for the supervisor, and that configuration section now allows an identity provider to be added. So I'm going to create a very simple uh, identity provider through the application section of my GitLab account. And that allows me to create an open ID connect using an OAuth provider in GitLab. Uh, we'll just take the callback URL from vSphere and put it into the redirect URL there. And you can also see in the scopes that I can select open ID, profile, and email. With the scopes now configured, we can return to the vSphere client and we can use the information such as the application ID and the secret that we've just created to set up the provider on the vSphere client. So I just give it a name. We're going to give it a URL, which is uh, pointing back to GitLab. And the username claim uh, option, I'm just going to put in as email. That will make it easy to identify the user in logs and so on uh, when we're actually doing uh, identity provider type tasks. So we now populate the client ID and the client secret. This is the information that we get from the uh, identity provider that we set up or the uh, Open ID Connect that we set up. And we add in the scopes that we created, such as Open ID, email, and profile. So that completes the setting up of the identity provider. Uh, you can verify the settings as shown. And so the next thing to do now is just to make sure that we can use the identity of the user in GitLab to actually do tasks on vSphere with Tanzu. So we can see now that there is a new identity source called GitLab, but I'm not going to set up any new identities just yet. I want to show you how things behave uh, without having set up that identity or giving that identity any permissions. So we're switching to the CLI and we're going to use the Tanzu login now to point it at the supervisor cluster endpoint as well as giving the supervisor cluster a name. I'm just going to call it SV. So what you can see here is a, uh, a request to visit a URL so that you get your authorization code. And so we're visiting the uh, URL. We're saying to authorize that particular user. And then we're getting a code that we can copy and place back in the CLI and paste it in like so. So that has authenticated our user, chogan at vmware.com, which is my GitLab user, in order to be able to do Tanzu CLI tasks. So now I should be able to list clusters. Uh, but as you can see here, you can only list clusters at a namespace scope. And so I'm going to try and list clusters at the namespace scope. But it's failed once again. And the reason it's failed is that I haven't given this user any permissions on the namespace. At the moment, the only user who has permissions on the namespace is the administrator user. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to add a new identity source, which is GitLab. I'm going to provide the user, which is the email address that, as you can see there. And then I'm going to allow this user to edit within the namespace. So now we have that user added. Let's repeat the previous command and see whether I can now list clusters in the Cormac NS namespace. And I successfully can. So the next thing we want to do is make sure that this user can actually access the cluster. And this is the Tanzu Kubernetes cluster now, not the supervisor cluster. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the kubeconfig and I'm going to get it without using the dash dash admin option, which gives us administrator privileges. We basically want our developers to have their own user access rather than giving them full on administrator access. So there we can see that the uh, 
we can get the kubeconfig created. You can see the context there. And then we can actually see if we can interrogate the cluster as a user rather than administrator, and we can. Now, of course, you could continue to use the dash dash admin, but as I said, at that point, you're just giving individuals or developers administrator access. It could be very difficult to figure out who's doing what um, on the cluster. Uh, it's so much better to be able to have individual identities um, so you can actually determine what's happening or who's doing what tasks on the cluster. But as I said, you can still use the dash dash admin. And as you can see there, we can still query the cluster as the admin user. And that completes the demonstration.